What's going on, Titans fans? Welcome into an impromptu version of the Glory Day Sports Show. I'm your host, Jake Robertson. Follow me on Twitter slash X at Glory Day Sports. Today, we'll be doing a little combine preview. And if I see we've got some people hopping into the chat, if you're checking it out on Twitter, make sure you head over to YouTube and like and subscribe. You can also find us on Apple Podcasts or any of your major platforms. Um, but we got to hear Brian Callahan and Rank Arthon speak to the media just a little while ago. Got a couple nice little tidbits on those. Um, if you're following me on Twitter, you know I put out earlier today, who are your guys' draft sleeper? Who are your guys? And I got about the top 30 wide receivers out of those um, picks, and we got a couple other ones. So we're going to break this up into two different shows today. I'm just going to be covering the offense. We got a lot of skill positions that we're going to be looking at and a lot of guys that uh, might be slept on a little bit and have a lot to gain in this combine in the underwear Olympics. Uh, we got to hear Brian Callahan talk about where their receiving score kind of stands right now. He's excited to work with Traylon Burks. We'll see what transpires out of that, if anything at all. Um, and he kind of spoke about what he likes in a wide receiver as far as um, he, he, the do-it-all guys. That's awesome. That's that's amazing. But he did say he likes to see the guys that can stretch the field as well as other guys that can win in those 50-50 situations. So it's not a one-size-fits-all. Um, and talking about the O-line to wide receiver discrepancy, he said, Guys that can score touchdowns tend to make more of an impact. So that might lead us to think that he's looking more so at the Marvin St. Harrison Juniors, the Malik Neighbors, the Roma Dunzes, opposed to the Olu Fashionus or the Joe Alts. So it kind of gives us a little bit more of an insight, but more than anything, it's coach speak. It is what it is. But I got about three to four picks at each position on offense that we'll do a brief little overview if you have any comments make sure you throw them down there we'll cover some of those guys as well i could only fit some at the end of the show i only got an hour of lunch break but let's go ahead hop into these wide receivers positions and we've already touched on one of this guy one of these guys already that's roma dunze out of washington probably the most to gain out of that upper echelon with marvin harrison and malik neighbors not doing anything this week. And they'll be speaking to media. I don't think Marvin Harrison is even planning on running at his pro day or anything like that. We know Neighbors is planning as of now to do that. Uh, but Rome, if this guy can get into those four threes, and he's reported to run there before, if that's the case, that's going to silence those separation concerns that you see from a lot of people. I don't see that on tape. I think he is as close to a blue chip as you can be for that athletic position. Um, I've seen comps, and I, I wish I could give credit to you, but I've seen somebody say he's an athletic D-hop. Uh, obviously, Hopkins didn't play, perform super well at the Combine, um, and Rome has a very similar-esque game, in my opinion. And uh, if, he can, if he can show that change of direction or that top-end speed, that's only going to raise his stock and might lead him into that 1A, 1B, 1C-S conversation. Um does everything great, but really nothing the best. He's better at Marvin Harrison at some things. He's good, or he's better at Malik Neighbors at some things, but he's not the best at any of those things. So that tends to knock him just a little bit. Um, my guy that I'm super excited to see run is Xavier Worthy out of Texas. This is uh, my wide receiver four on my big board. I, I think he's that next guy, in my opinion. Fastest clock, miles per hour in all of the pros or college last season. Um, I'm looking at four twos or bust, in my opinion, on the 40. Um, and I'm sure if you saw my post last week, I, I think if you paired this guy with the Hollywood Brown of free agency, you immediately give the Titans the fastest wide receiving core in the entire NFL. Um, you can say what you like about – um, Hollywood, but as an OU fan, always love the kid. I, I think he can just give that that next step to this wide receiver's core. Um, and Xavier Worthy, great route runner, but he is very slight. So that weight that he comes in with could be big as well. He sits at 6'1", but he does not look 180, in my opinion. And those bigger corners, they're going to knock him off the line of scrimmage, and it's going to be a game over. So if he's at a little bit of size and has that 
that speed still that's going to be amazing and that's going to lead him into that upper second round tier to maybe low first round so he has a lot to gain this weekend um next malik washington out of virginia this is a super compact guy at 5'8 190 ish um true slot but i think he led all the ncaa last season at the wide wide receiver position for broken tackles so this is a guy that's not afraid to get down and dirty um at that size, he's he, he's never going to be a, a decent blocker at that slot. So, and he's not going to be able to play out wide, unlike somebody similar weight like Xavier Worthy. I think can play on the outside of the next level. Um, he's very good at finding holes in the zone and has the technique to beat man coverage. So he could he could be that true slot for your team and be able to be a good slot. Um, doesn't have the overall athleticism on tape that I see to be that upper echelon, but if he can just show good numbers this weekend, I think his stock could go from that that fifth to sixth round to up to maybe a fourth and get into that next conversation, um, that next tier. Um, got two more for you at the wide receiver position. I want to touch on Luke McCaffrey out of Rice, a converted quarterback. And we know how that's worked out in the slot in the league with a lot of other teams um, moved up a lot of rankings after the senior bowl. Um, he's still learning the position and obviously he's a McCaffrey. I mean, he's going to do good things. Um, we saw a lot of lad McConkey getting that Cooper cup comp. I think McCaffrey is closer to cup than lad is just size comparison, what they do well and kind of the, the, where they could learn at the next position or at the next level. Um, I think he can develop into a starter on the inside or the outside. I'll be interested to see what his straight line speed looks like at the combine. I changed the direction. I have no concern at all. I think he's a good route runner and he's still learning his craft and still honing it. And then lastly, we got Ryan Florney, Flor Noy out of Southeast Missouri State. It's a small, small school cat. Um, reported 4340 in the past. So if he runs anywhere close to that, that that's that's a huge tick. Um, 10 inch hands at the, uh, the senior bowl as well and played well at the senior bowl. So going up in competition still still looked really well. Um, David Reyna says kind of interested to see who backs up will Levis this next season. I like Malik Willis, but I do not think he's going to be the backup this next season um and here in brian callahan talk earlier today it kind of seems to lend the veteran route um so it could be a bunch of different guys i don't think it's going to be somebody that's competing in the combine this week though um but yeah if you're checking us out for the first time make sure you head over to youtube make sure you subscribe um before we hop into the running back position make sure you go and check out our friends over at Functional Medical Institute. You can go over to sherwood.tv forward slash glory. That's going to be our affiliate um, website where you can find things like Kingdom Fuel, which I actually got some over here. Full meal replacement powder, 20 grams of pea protein, full multivitamin, mixture of paleo organic greens, reds, fibers, essential fats, and oils. We'll be giving away some of that to one of our subscribers at the end of March. As, long, as well as with our Kingdom Candy, which is basically that fuel in a bar form and a bag of the all-organic mold-free coffee Kingdom Cup. Uh, make sure you go check that out. Make sure you go sign up for that free webinar. To check that out and save hundreds of dollars on your initial consultations. So the largest functional medical practice in the world at this point in time, over 10,000 active patients. Um, specializing in blood work, DNA testing, hormones, peptides, supplementation, et cetera, et cetera. But, yeah, go check that out over there, guys. Um, Brian Callahan did talk about the, the running back position uh, earlier today and just kind of the devaluing of it. Um, he said it's not so much devalue, but it's a division of labor. And I love the way he put it. It's shifted more so from the, the one back to the three back. So instead of one guy doing it all, it's three doing a little less. Um he also talked about Derrick Henry and kind of where he fits into things. 
Derek Henry's gone, in my opinion. I think we're moving on to a different style. That's just what it is. I love Derek Henry. He's one of my favorite uh, Titans of all time, one of my favorite NFL players of all time. But I think it is what it is. It's time to move on. Um, but, yeah, we got four guys that I would love to see in two-tone blue here. Um Hopping into the first one, and this was probably the most commented guy in my comments, and that was Jalen Wright, obvious, out of Tennessee. Maybe the fastest play, one of the fastest players in this draft. No, no ifs, ands, or buts. Ran 23.6 miles per hour in practice this season. In practice. Um, great balance. Bruce Feldman's freaks list. This is where he shines. This athletic testing, this is going to raise – him into maybe that RB1 for a lot of people going forward. Um, next stop, kind of the polar opposite of that, is going to be Braylon Allen out of Wisconsin. This is a big dude. If you're looking for Derrick Henry in this draft, it's it's Braylon Allen. Um, 6'3", 245. I don't think he's Derrick Henry. I don't think he's A.J. Dillon. I think he falls somewhere in between the two. He's, he's a big dude, falls forward. He's been – on on everybody's radars really since his true freshman season at Wisconsin and even at his size shows good lateral quickness and is a decent receiver out of the backfield and that's something you're not getting out of Derrick Henry so he, he's able to take he's not going to run a full route tree or anything out of the backfield but he can he can take the screen he can take the flat routes he, he can do it very well um next up this is this is probably my guy. This is Ray Davis out of Kentucky. Ever since I watched his original taping, I was I was sold. He might not have the elite speed or the breaking tackle ability of a Jalen Wright or a Braylon Allen, but he does everything well, and he's a very good receiver out of the backfield. I've seen comps of him being very Nick Chubb-esque. And I, I do like that comp. He's very compact at like 5'8", 220. He's a little bowling ball down there. I love Ray Davis. And then just a little sleeper. Um, I don't see a lot of talk about Tyron Tracy Jr. out of Purdue. Um, this is a guy I've loved for a couple months now. This is a former Iowa wide receiver. He's originally out of Indy. So going back to his hometown for all of this. Very good vision for being a converted wide receiver at Iowa to just coming into Purdue this last season. Very good vision. Liked what I saw at the East West Shrine Bowl. Um, should run in the four fours. If he gets in that low four fours, I mean, this is only going to raise his stock for me. Being that converted wide receiver, he's going to be able to run those routes and everything as well. Not, not super worried about that at all. Um, next up. If you're checking us out, guys, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe, of course. Head over to YouTube. Um, Brian Callahan did talk about our coaching staff today. Looks at like they're looking at hiring the strength and conditioning coach somewhere after the combine, probably about mid-March is kind of what he said. Um, and I'll be super excited to see who they bring in just because we had the status quo for so long with Brabel and we had the injury history. So, who they bring in could be a big point. Um, but, yeah, let's go ahead. Let's hop into these tight ends. Uh, to start, it's got to be on a radar, at least with Brock Bowers out of Georgia. This is a true blue chip, blue chip prospect. And he wants to come to the Titans, What you can take. You don't get to pick where you come, but I do like that he wants to come here. Um, he's a big glorified receiver in my position, in, in, in my opinion. He's uh, 6'3", 235-ish, so he's smaller for NFL tight end standards. But he, as, as a receiver, he's just as good as those top three, in my opinion. And he can offer those end of rounds. He does a lot of good things that other tight ends don't do. He is generational, um, is what David just said. And uh, I agree. He, he's a generational prospect. I don't like using that term, but he's the best tight end we've seen come out in a very long time. I think he's better than Kyle Pitts. He might and shouldn't test as well as Kyle Pitts does, but I think he's about as surefire of a prospect at the tight end position that we may have seen ever. Um, hopping into the next three, 
quite a bit of a drop off, going to be honest with you. But I think this is more so where the Titans should end up going opposed to taking that premium at the tight end position early. Um, starting off with Theo Johnson out of Penn State, I think Penn State has the best strength and conditioning program in the NCAA. We see guys come out constantly that are just physical freaks, and it's just year in and year out. Um, so Theo, he, he is an athlete opposed to, as I say, a football player. He, he had a great list last season and really surprised me at the Senior Bowl. I think uh, this is a guy that you bring in early. He can learn from those top two wide or tight ends. I think this is a guy that could come in behind Chig and Josh Wiley and develop. And then below him, we got Brevin Spanford. This is a guy out of Minnesota that is basically just an additional tackle. Um, 6'7", 250, 260, if I remember right. Um, great blocker, offers you absolutely zero in the passing game. I think he kind of actually hurt his stock, in my opinion, going back to school this last season. Um, but if you're looking for that Travon Wesco role to fill, that Jeff Swaim, Brevin Spanford is probably the best prospect in this draft for that specific role that can come in and just be that blocking tight end. And then I just got a little wild card for you. This is a guy I just recently watched not too long ago, and that's Tanner McLaughlin out of Arizona. This is a converted wide receiver that played at Southern Utah, um, moved over to Arizona, listed at 6'5", 245. So he's got decent size for even being a converted wide receiver. Um, and we know these Titans, they love their converted wide receivers, Delaney Walker. Um, he can stretch the seam. He's by no means a dynamic blocker, and you kind of would expect that at this point. But he can come in and can learn, and is going to be a very late draft pick. So this is a guy you might even be able to get as an undrafted free agent. So just wanted to put your your eyes on him. Um, but if it's your first time checking us out, make sure you come and hang out with me, Jonathan, and B. Will on Thursday mornings for the Morning Glory Show. We just had our first showing last Thursday, so go check it out on Apple Podcast. Make sure you go subscribe on YouTube. Um, we always end each draft with a or each show with a draft of whatever we're feeling that week. Last week it was best video games of all time. This week it's going to be things that make you say hell yeah. So that should be a really fun one. You can go a bunch of different directions with that. But let's go ahead, go ahead and get into these hog mollies. And that's going to be Bill Callahan's bread and butter. And Rand said he, he came away from Bill, what Bill's looking for in an offensive lineman, said it was a master class. Everybody was loud. And I, I expect nothing from the less. But you can't make a gourmet dish with ramen packets if you're a chef. So you got to have the pieces to be able to develop into these players. So there's so this, this is a deep lineman class, and it's really deep throughout. Um, so I just got a couple guys. I, I wish I could cover more of them, but let's go ahead. Let's hop into these tackles. And the first one, I have more questions than anything. That's Troy Fontenew out of Washington has those. Uh, Take him back to the bus blocks. He, he is a, a he is a dude out there. Um, the arm length is my biggest question. It doesn't look like he has sufficient arm length for the next level, in my opinion. But I've also seen reported that he has like 35-inch arms. So I just want to see what he measures in at there. This is a guy that I, I think he's a great athlete. He's very mobile in space and love to see that. Could improve his anchor a little bit. It's not over a lot, a, a huge concern for me. I think this is a guy that could probably come in day one if he has those um, measurements and be a, a starting left tackle for you. you. Could probably kick him inside if you wanted to. I would want to keep him on the left side though. And then my guy, I think, at the tackle position, and I've been huge on him ever since the beginning, and that's Javon Foster out of Mizzou. Um, this one sack given up last season in the SEC, seven in the last three years. And the one he give up, gave up this season wasn't even to an SEC team. I think it was to like middle Tennessee, something like that. So this is a guy 
went, had the the 35 inch arms at the senior bowl, played well there at tackle and guard, liked what I saw at both. So I think this is a very versatile lineman that you can kind of plug and play pretty early on. Does a great job at picking up and passing off stunts, picking up blitzes, um, could play on the left side for you at tackle, could also play at the right side. So I think this is a very versatile lineman. I think he's very slept on. He's kind of looked at as that fourth, fifth round prospect as of now. I could see somebody taking a shot at him in the second, especially if he tests very well. Um, next up, another guy that's a Bruce Feldman's freaks list. That's Kingsley Suomatai out of uh, BYU. Hit 21.5 miles per hour at 318 pounds as a freshman. That, that is stupid. So this is a guy I just want to see what his test numbers look like. He was very off and on at the senior bowl. I saw some snaps that I absolutely loved, and I saw some where he gave up back-to-back sacks. So this is a guy that he's that little clay ball that you want to put Bill Callahan, Bill Callahan in front of and see what he can do there. Um, High-risk, high high-reward type player. Just turned 21 a couple weeks ago. So this is a young player as well. So And he didn't have the best coaching at BYU. So getting him at the next level, I think this could be a perennial starter for somebody. And if all things come together, he could be an all-pro. He could be that, that pro bowler for you. And then lastly, just a guy I want to see test as well is Arterius Mims out of Georgia, 6'7", 340. Doesn't have a lot of tape because of injuries, and you kind of see that with the the bigger offensive lineman prospects, and it's just one of those things. But player comp is Bob Sapp in the longest yard, the um, I love little Michael kind of guy. That he's he is a dude, and you saw the the high school tape that kind of came out earlier this week, where he's running and he's three foot taller than everybody else on the field. This is a guy that's been an athlete for a very long time, um, and even with the lack of reps and stuff, this could be Bill Callahan's Dewan Jones from last season. Very similar, big tall guys. Got the weight, got the anchor. I'd be super happy to see what we got from. Arterius Mims, and it's kind of a, a guy that's sitting at the bottom of the first right now, but players fall. If this guy fell into the second round to 38, this is a you, you got to take that shot, even if it is it could it could have be injury concerns. I think that's the only thing that could really stop this kid at the next level. I get not taking a Georgia tackle though. I I can I can see that. I one one fool me once, shame on me, fool me twice. Yeah, um, but let's go ahead. Let's go ahead and hop into these interior offensive linemen. You're just going to throw three at you. Um, first off, got to fill this hitter position. Aaron Brewer's gone, and there's a guy at a Penn State. Got a couple Penn States on this list, and that's Hunter Norzad. Um, this is a guy that's played all up and down that right side of the line. Great mobility for a, a zone-based scheme. Um, former Ivy Leaguer at Cornell. So. I want my center to be smart. And I know just going to college doesn't mean that. But being an Ivy Leaguer, I think this guy has what it takes physically to pair with that mental stuff. And bringing him in early, pair him with Will Levis, I, I'm super happy if they brought him in. Next up, we got the Swiss Army Knife, and that is Graham Barton at a Duke. He's played all five positions, played all five positions well. Brentwood native, this is a guy – that S2 scores mean absolutely nothing, but he would he would score very high on it, in my opinion. Um, great, great, great in space and should really have a great combine, in my opinion. Um, good zone blocker. Arm length is really the only concern I have for him. Um, we'll see what he comes in at. But if anything, you have to kick him inside. No problem at all. I think he's a day one starter for somebody. Um and then Zach Zinter, we'll end it with Zach Zinter out of Michigan. Had that gruesome injury last season. Um, I've seen it reported where he should be ready by rookie minicamp. And he, he's at the combine. I don't know what the extent is, if he'll be testing or just speaking to the media, whatever it's going to be. I think regardless, this is a guy that people are sleeping on just because of that injury, which is not a long-term thing. He has great size little taller for my 
preference at 6'6", 320, uh, 322. Very good anchor, very good punch at that size. Already a very good player that's still just scratching the surface. Definitely going to be more successful in a gap-based scheme than a um, zone-based scheme. The athleticism doesn't he's not he's not going to be the good in space type player we'll say that but let me know who you guys are looking forward to the most in the comments um make sure you like comment and subscribe come join us on thursday morning seven central uh for the morning glory show but we're gonna get out of here guys and we'll talk to you later love you mean it